So this is a, a special, pretty special moment for us to have Dr. Remedios uh, Melero join us. Um, I've known of Reme's work since I started with the Public Knowledge Project. Um, when I was sort of doing an environmental scan and trying to figure out this open access thing and what people were doing around the world, your name came up again and again, um, both for, for Spain and for Europe. You've been providing such leadership in this area that when we knew we were going to come to Barcelona and to Spain for the conference, we knew that we very much wanted to have you join us and we're so pleased that you were able to join us. Remy holds a PhD in chemistry from the University of Valencia and completed your doctoral thesis at the Institute of Agrochemistry and Technology, and Technology at the Spanish National Research Council. Now you're currently a member of the scientific committees for Red Lick and for Cielo Spain. Those are two organizations I think most of you probably know about Cielo and Red Lick. If you don't, look those up because they're incredibly important uh, leaders in the movement for open access and for moving things forward on a global scale. Some of your initiatives in Europe have included FOSTER to facilitate open science training and European research and FOSTER Plus. And I just wanted to, to just really thank you for the work that you're doing internationally around open access, how it's making such progress in making knowledge public, which is what we're all about and what we're all interested in. So please, we look forward to hearing what you have to say to us this morning. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> So thank you very much for this introduction. So I, before starting my talk, I would like to, uh, thank, you, to thank the University, the Universitat Autónoma de Barcelona, <laughs> which is the original name. And uh, I also want to thank, uh, of course, the PKP for organizing this conference, for inviting me to be here. And I also want to thank Leslie Tan from University of Toronto, uh, who has, uh, help me advising my, my, I mean, I, I will share with him my presentation and he advised and he comments my slides and of course I want to thank him and, uh, and so at least uh, publicly. So the second thing I wanted to explain is why this title. So you see Alice, well this, uh, this uh, my talk is inspired, or at least the title, in the book of uh, Lewis Carroll, which is Alice in the Wonderland, to express or to share with you my thoughts that there are more worlds that are perfect or wonderful, uh, north, um, or our north global environment. So there are more worlds, there are more environments that could, um, we should take into account. The third thing is uh, I feel like Leonardo da Vinci here because I'm, see I'm seeing the, like a mirror screen here. You know that Leonardo da Vinci uh, wrote on the, from left <laughs> to, the, to the right and to, to read their, their uh, writings, you have to put a, a, a mirror. So that's uh, why I think <laughs> I'm feeling like that. Um, so I'm, I'm pointing here, but I'm looking there. So <laughs> it's a little bit strange. So, that's why my, t uh, my title is, and um, second, uh, you will see along the, my talk some characters from the book. Don't worry, so they are, yes, uh, they are, um, they are in publicly. <laughs> 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 okay, so I uh, will start again. Mm. So, so, what? Mm. This? Oh. No? Is that what you want to do? I want to. Ah, oh, sorry, it's, it's off. <laughs> on, off. Okay, now it's on. Sorry. Okay. So, as Kevin said, my background is chemistry. So, that's why I use in my presentations a lot of figures, a lot of tables, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of images. That's why um, I will show you those, those things along, along my talk. So, that's why I will start with some figures and facts and some reflections and some questions. For instance, um, will these figures on fat I'm going to present you reflect concentration in a few hands? I mean, talking in, in the publishing uh, environment. Or do these reflect across services dependency? 
or that's one size fit all. So this, remember these questions because I will uh, give you some answers along my, my talk, right? So I don't know if you have read or you have seen before this paper. It was published in 2015, but it's, the data are coming from 2013. So um, the figure is not very big, not very clear probably, I mean the icons, but still the, the red, the red uh, line. And these are data uh, from um, a number of um, papers, the number of journals, a number of citations. See the red line is always decreasing. And the other ones, they are the five top publishers in the world. So they are always going up. So rising, the numbers, the percentage of papers, the percentage of journals, the percentage of uh, citations. Um, that's, uh, as I said, our, our data from um, 2013 or till 2013. And uh, one could imagine in the digital age that uh, journals should be increased or uh, more open, openness in the, in the, in the publishing atmosphere. And, um, and so on, so facilitate the, the, the diversity of, of this uh, ecology of uh, the publishing uh, world. But instead of that, no, look at the figures. So that's instead of that, so those big publishers continue rise, oh, rise, rising up. Okay, this is from the, from the same um, paper. So if, um, you, if you notice, there are around 50%, at least 50% of the papers were published by these five uh, top publishers. But even in some fields like chemistry, for instance, there are more than 50. In fact, they're, the figures so uh, they're uh, 70%. So, but something similar uh, happens with uh, the social sciences. Uh, humanities, not so much. Look at down, down the figure is the, the humanities, but psychology, for instance, also nearly nearly 70 percent. Profit. So the director was talking about the prices and uh, the fight with the publishers because, uh, of course, they want to gain the, the good money, but at the same time, so they they have considered that we are uh, public companies, com enterprises. So. Um, I don't know if it's right or not, but I think um, a profit of nearly 40% is too much. It's too much, I mean, and, and coming from institutions like our, that they are uh, research or, or public institutions or universities. So this is uh, more, I, I told you I like figures and, and tables. So this is more recent the paper or report published by the European University Association. And uh, you can download the, the report, and I show you some figures only. So if the previous paper was uh, data from 2013, this, these are from 2017. You see the production, the, the global production of these top uh, publishers are still nearly or more than 50%. Look at here, if I, here. So. But at the same time, with this production, the, the, I mean, the, 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 the money they, they get, or the, the money um, the, that goes all this production is 75%, just in five hands. So that is your, for your reflection. This is, the, uh, this is the same report, and this is very interesting uh, figure here. Uh, it's not very clear, but it's the cost, the cost by paper, and uh, depending on, on the country. This is, uh, this is uh, the report, or it's uh, the result of a survey among 26 countries in Europe. And um, you know, we are in the Autonomous University of Barcelona, but uh, I think there are more people from coming from other universities, and we don't have the same price. I mean, if I buy uh, this thing here, and I, I buy you this thing, so if you go to another country, the same thing costs other, other, or has another price. So that's uh, what this represents. So there is a, um, um, a rising cost, um, depending on the number of papers published by the institution, but at the same time, there are not the same prices in different countries. So, say that this is the, the, the cost and the production, uh, the total um, production of these um, this, this companies, but I will show you also the 
side, the open access side. Yesterday, during the, the great party or the great invitation to be in Kugat, in San Kugat, John Belinsky was talking about the, that, that Elsevier is considered a green, a green <laughs> publisher. But uh, yes, well, in some places, for, for instance, from Serpa Romeo, if you uh, search for Elsevier journal, they say, yeah, they are green because they allow self archiving, but self archiving sometimes 48 months after the publication. So they are different, as Esteban Hannah said, they are different greens from pale to deep green. So Elsevier could be green in Serpa Romeo, but it's not as green as any other um, uh, journal. So I will show you this, uh, this side of open access from uh, these two cases, Springer and Elsevier. And it's the model, you know, the, the, the APCs, the, the model from a subscription to, I mean, pay for reading and pay for, for publishing. So, and, um, and I have also more questions about it, about this, um, this, um, this um, item, so issue. So it's um, APCs, so ARCOS, and quality link, because so some of the, the open access journals or hybrid journals are um, have born from um, already re uh, journals, hmm? I mean, already established journals. And the journals with higher APCs attract more citations. Are more expensive journals uh, more reputable? If so, we'll be able to afford uh, less wealthy institutions to pay them. That is, uh, I put uh, the Matthew effect, if it's is this that Matthew effect. And this is, well, these questions are inspired by this, uh, this um, article that you can also download from, from this reference. Said that, so, more numbers. So this is from the um, Intact uh, project. That is, uh, uh, that is uh, a project um, about the cause of the publications. In this case, this is uh, data from year 2018. Only the cause of APCs in Europe, in institution, European institutions. So you see, they are only with three uh, publishers. They. Uh, the costs of, uh, of um, the APCs from these publishers are more than 50%. So only with three, three of them. This is data from 2018. If you want to go to the, the, the website, you can have also uh, data from previous years of the, I mean the, 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 whole, the whole data all together. So remember that. But, so this is the the open access uh, side of these publishers. In, in this case, so see the, the gray bar is uh, just the production of these uh, Springer and Elsevier publishers. And compared with, uh, with their productions, you can see no, the, the, uh, the orange bar is less than 5% of their production, including, uh, uh, for instance, Springer has more journals because uh, Springer acquired so the, the BMC, the um, um, oh sorry, <laughs> biometric, oh, biometric central, no, uh, yes, biometric central uh, journals. Um, and this is comparing the prices uh, of the hybrid journals um, of these two companies, um, and the, the orange one in this case, the, the first one is this, <laughs> is uh, from a uh, uh, Elsevier. And uh, you see the gray, uh, the gray bar is the average of the cost of APCs in other journals. And uh, you see the difference. Well, this is, a, I, I would say, a statistical uh, difference. And the other one is uh, the, 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 gold, the gold mean price for the, the journals that are completely open. I mean, the, you pay for uh, publishing, but they are not hybrid. And then the second, uh, on the top, on the bottom, sorry, there are data from Springer, so they are considerable less, less, well, they are expensive, but <laughs> compared with, uh, with Elsevier, they are, they are mm, less, uh, less expensive. This also, that, um, these um, images of these graphs are also from, uh, from this, uh, from ESAC, and you will see is what I, I put before, more or less, that this is the case of Elsevier compared with all the production, so there are very little um, proper, uh, proportion of the open open access um, uh, products uh, compared with uh, with uh, 
a springer, that's why, because the BMC. And now, so we have, I've been talking about products. I want to go to, to a new issue, that is the companies. I mean, uh, journals or services companies that has been bought or acquired by this, uh, by, by this uh, uh, type of uh, publishers. This is, uh, this is also data from the, the, the article I mentioned before. And you will see this uh, until 2013. So this, the red bar, um, the red bar is the, 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 the change from a small to, to big publishers. That means in the, when the digital uh, age began to, to flourish, I, I, I would say that. So these companies that were very worried about the, to have the, I mean, the market on, on, on their hands, so they began to, to buy these small journals probably. And uh, that's why the, the, the increase of these, uh, these red bars, hmm? you see. But this is from, uh, from uh, Leslie Chan and, and, and his colleagues, and it's, uh, it was published this year. Uh, you can see, I will point here because <laughs> I cannot, I'm not Leonardo. So, the, um, so the, the, if you see the, the, the red bar are the, the academic service and the, the blue one are the academic content. So there is a, it's a shift in, the, in, in, in these years, you see it here? Why? Because these companies, and I will show you later, so um, not only sell content, they also provide services, of course, for money. So, and we will be, and we should be aware of that. Hmm? This is also from, uh, from the previous, uh, uh, well, this is a chapter of a book, and you can see here, up there, up, there is a very, it's an scheme of the research production. So we start with the, so with the design or the idea of the, the research, we analyze data, we publish uh, uh, the, the results, and then we disseminate the results, and then we probably go to an evaluation uh, research, hmm? uh, or evaluation or promotion, or or a tenure, and we are evaluated by our scientific uh, production. But down hmm, here, on, there is the same, look at this, it's the same process, but with all these services that in this case uh, Elsevier has acquired during the last years. Hmm? So it's, uh, I invite you to go to this, uh, to this uh, chapter and read it more, more deeply. But you see, this is like a hype, <laughs> with plenty with uh, these Elsevier products. I will show you this, uh, are, well, I made myself this, uh, this, this and, and second one, and I will only focus on this, um, some of the companies Elsevier, in this case, has acquired during the last years. Science Direct, everybody knows Science Direct, so it's a searching, uh, Scopus is an indexing, so they are more or less familiar. But what about Pure? Peer was born like a like an independent company, and of course it was a, a private company, and developed Peer. Peer is a Chris system, right? Think about that. B Press, B Press was born also independent, was sold to Elsevier. SSR and the same. It's a data provider sold to Elsevier. Arias, Arias is like a you know a scholar one. So Arias is the competence of a scholar one. So it's produced these workshop, workflows along the publishing uh, process. Of course, Elsevier, journals also, and Plum Analytics, remember the Plum? So it was also an independent uh, company, but you see, if you put all together, we have the searching, the indexing, the, the repositories, the quiz, the alt metrics, so it's, so, all these products, all these services, are part of the of the of the, the issues involved in our uh, institutions, in our environment, in, in in the university. So they are not silly. So I I used to say so. Um, Elsevier has a very good marketing uh, team because they are always looking at the academia to see what. They are, I mean, what they need. So that's why they are, I mean, they have spent a lot of money buying these companies, but it was not for nothing. It was because of one reason. Uh, the second one is Holdspring. Holdspring is a holding, 
and um, uh, Spring and Nature belong uh, to this uh, holding. And uh, there are three different um, oh, departments, not departments, but blocks, I would say blocks. One is Digital Science, and Digital Science owns Simpletic. So again, it's a Chris system. So uh, Altmetric also is uh, Altmetrics, no? or metrics. Uh, um, dimensions is a search analysis. By the way, uh, it has some part is free, but another one is, is not. And Fixture is also a repository. So, of course, Spring and Nature has uh, the BMC journals, more journals, but focus on that. Again, repositories, so all data repositories, uh, freeze, altmetrics, and indexing or searching engines. So that's important because that's why my title was what is behind the curtains of the, uh, of the scholarly publishing because sometimes we are not aware of that, but we should be aware of, this, uh, of these changes and all these movements between the, these uh, private companies. So what uh, happens? With the, with, uh, what are the secondary effects? The first one, well, they are my thoughts is this uh, dependency of, this, of these companies. Uh, second is the lack of transparency, so we have to trust them. Hmm? Um, this is uh, also this, this, uh, these companies influence a lot, and I will show you an example after this uh, slide. Influence the decision making because they influence what products are they, go I mean, universities going to, to buy in the next year or for the next years. And, so they reduce diversity in the, this ecology, scientific ecology. It's a, I, I um, go back to my, uh, at the beginning of my presentation, take into account that digital, the digital age allows more diversity and instead, so we are always more concentrated this, this product. And um, of course, if they are buying this, all these services, produce this cross service integration. What happens? So if you buy, for instance, uh, the Scopus, no? The Scopus uh, license, or you buy for a license, the Scopus, and then they offer, oh, but, yes, but I have this Pris, and I have this, uh, this altmetric system, and I have this repository, oh, and I offer you this price for the whole packet. It's like a big deal, but a, a big deal for services. So that's the, uh, that there are the secondary effects, or from my point of view, of course. But this is another type of dependency. So uh, this is um, something that was very criticized in some lists uh, because this is a, uh, the, European, um, the European portal uh, of uh, Open Science European portal. There is uh, an open access monitor. So, but if you look at here, which is these data are based on Scopus uh, data and also from uh, AMPE wall. But who owns Scopus? Elsevier. Who is behind that? Elsevier. So my question is, should the European Commission uh, <laughs> hire Elsevier for this? So I let <laughs> my question there. Uh, another question. So uh, yesterday we were talking about that, and um, I, I mean, I'm nothing against Dryad, and I, I think it's a very good quality product, but you see that Sinodo, which is the, 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 the the European uh, uh, orphan um, uh, repository, so that was uh, announced this year. So it's going to have an agreement. I don't know what kind of, a, of uh, an agreement, but what I see, if even if the uh, publicly funded from European Commission could allow to upload data here, so what happens if I have not funded by the European Commission, for instance, or by I have no project, for instance, what happens? So you have to pay. So it's like, again, this is a, um, like a creating depend dependency from, from, these, uh, from these systems. So I repeat, I have nothing against Riot. If you look at Riot, this is very well presented, well, uh, well uh, good quality, but that's, uh, that's, my, that's my point. So if there were uh, Collateral <laughs> effects. They are also can this all all these things can encourage uh, another things, new ways, new ideas, new ecosystems, or new evolutions, or other worlds. And this is well, you know, my 
my background is chemistry, and I love this uh, this <laughs> periodic table with all these uh, um, all these uh, initiatives. Some of them, their system, and they are uh, classified according to these uh, these uh, topics. So I invite you to see or to revise with more detail. But that's uh, to show you there are more more worlds than uh, the the ones we we know. And this is uh, another way to see uh, or how to take a, a decision. And I don't know if you are familiar with this uh, framework, which is difficult to pronounce because it's a whale, so Cunefin, probably. Cunefin means habitat in, um, in Celtic or Welsh. And uh, it's, a, it's a framework to take a decision. You see, I have, um, I have put these uh, el sites here. The, the, the simple or the five uh, the dimensions: simple, complicated, complex, chaotic, and disorder. So I will state uh, by disorder. Disorder is when you don't know what to do, and uh, so one thing, the other. So you are a little bit so uh, confused. So forget it. But the, the other ones. Well, this is um, uh, a way to resolve these kind of decisions, and they are related with my previous uh, uh, issues. One uh, simple, this, um, the, this, uh, well, the, the simple one, what does mean the simple one? The simple one is with our experience, what are the next, uh, uh, the next decision of the next response? So based on our sp previous experience and based on, uh, on the status quo uh, uh, that currently we, we are in, in MERS. Complicated, with complicated would be difficult but it's also a decision based on the, the current experience. So these two uh, the dimensions, what uh, they provide is the uh, continue with the status quo. The other ones, if uh, I'm aware there are some physics, uh, physics in, 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 the, in the room, so it's the, um, it's the dimensions of complex and, um, and chaotic. A chaotic means exactly this: that is, uh, the, you are in a in a situation, in a state that is anything is evolving, changing. Hmm? But when one uh, one uh, evolves to another uh, state, so they are again uh, an order. So they are complex. Uh, the dimensions complex and dimens, uh, complex and chaotic. Sorry. So it means they, they are, or from my point of view, they innovate or encourage innovation and new environments. If we want to, want, uh, if we want to continue being, taking decisions in the, in, the, in the simple of the complicated uh, domi uh, uh, domains, so that's uh, probably we will continue with the figures I presented before. So that's why I, this is uh, Alice. So when they, they are grow, once she grows so much that so that means what, <laughs> that uh, that's one side fit all. No, of course not. But we have to consider more more dimensions. And yesterday, I don't know if uh, is this um, John around here? Yes, he is. Okay. So we were yesterday in the winery. So beautiful <laughs> museum. And um, so he was talking about the cooperative uh, uh, meaning or the cooperative uh, principle of PKP. So, and we, we I, I didn't talk with John, but this slide was in my presentation. And it's, it's one of these, um, I mean, going back to this uh, framework to, uh, to take a decision. So we will evolve in this cooperative uh, environment or good, the academia should or should the academia involve, uh, evolve in this more uh, cooperative system? Look at this, the definition of this, um, of, of what is a cooperative. Uh, this, is, uh, this is not my definition, it's from the International Cooperative Alliance. You can, uh, you can go there and, and check more information, but you, you see the cooperatives are based on the values of self-help, self-responsibility, democracy, equality, equity, and solidarity. And, uh, and, and also, the, in the tradition of their founders, cooperative members believe in the ethical values, honesty, openness, social responsibility, and caring of others. So if you look at this, they are more or less the principles of the respon uh, responsible and research and innovation, the RRI famous, no? or the open science. So, so that's why we, we, con we should consider all these kind of frameworks or environments in which we could be evolved and not depend on, on these very few hands. 
I like so much this uh, this blog. This is published in the in the in the London uh, School of Economics. So I, I'm not going to read it, but I invite you to read uh, to read it. But in in few wor in few words, so it's like we are the producers. We are funded by public uh, funds normally, and uh, I'm paid by by my government. So I get projects from uh, national projects or European projects. So we will we create the products. So and we just give for for nothing. The, I mean the, these companies put the pa uh, the nice package. So the nice package. So it's, uh, and they then they they sell uh, uh, us these packages. So I invite you also to reflect about this situation that the pre uh, I mean the rector was talking a little bit about that. So that is the. The white rabbit from Alice. <laughs> so saying that there is more than one world. That was my um, the theme or part of the theme of my of my talk. And I will talk about these initiatives I know very well from from Latin America. And Cielo or well, Pakel Abel Pakel will be here, so I am not going to talk much more about the Cielo. And Latindex is also a, a Latin America initiative. But I want to uh, give. Um, more or give more information about Redalic and America because I involved as, as Kevin said in the in the committees and I'm very proud to be there so America is uh, is a new initiative it's uh, it's open to anybody it's not just from Lat for Latin American uh, communities and it's uh, and their um, its principles and values are those that they are there I'm not going to read them but it's based I mean they are based on openness transparency, and of course, uh, mm, considering the, the knowledge as a common good. No, a knowledge is, in, I mean, to sell the, our knowledge and put in these nice packages and, 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 and sell, um, buy again those packages. So, and, um, so that's Amelika born in 2018, more or less, and now they are trying to, to be um, sustainable without, uh, without I mean, asking for money to the to the users. So let's let's see if we if we manage it. But I invite you to go there because it's not only um, it's it's not only a philosophy. There is a lot of services that America provide to the users and and to the community in 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 general. And I want to also to to give some uh, or point to this Plan U. Most of them know Plan S. Plan S. So, if I ask you, you know what is Plan S? Stand up with your hand. So, so who knows Plan U? One, <laughs> one, two. <laughs> okay. So that's great because uh, this is my my opportunity. <laughs> so it's uh, this is more or less is the role of preprints. So I'm happy also to because yesterday. So John Belinsky was talking about the, one of the new services will, to create, uh, will be to create a preprint service. So Plan U is based on the preprints. So if you have a preprint service, you can upload your, your preprint file, right? If you send to a journal, for instance, if I'm happy, I'm happy, oh, they accepted my, my, my paper with some corrections, minor corrections. So, but if I'm rejected, so I have to go to another journal. So, you know, one movement, two, three, many movements just for, for the same thing. If we have the preprints in a server, so it's quite easy to provide the handle to the publisher and say, here is my preprints, so you can evaluate giving my handle, for instance. So we spend money and we spend, uh, we spend also time because you don't have to make all these movements and to change the layout of the, of the, of the paper because the references changes, because the sections changes, uh, all these things. So that's what, uh, what the plan you say. So uh, instead of going to the PDF or the postprint, so let's use this preprint, uh, this preprint service. That means that not, I mean, the, the quality should not, shouldn't change because if I submit a paper, and I also upload in a print server, in a preprint server. So the quality, or at least from my point of view, is is the same. I'm not going to to change the quality because I'm going to a preprint server. So that's uh, what uh, uh, Plan U propose, and uh, 
and I must say that if you are in a, I mean, if your files are in a preprint server, so you can create also underlay kernels. So they are kernels created with the content from these preprint uh, servers. So this is, uh, you have here the reference and you can read the, the, the whole explanation of the plan you, but I'm happy that only two persons knew about that. There are probably now 100 people that know about, that can know about the plan you. And uh, this is part of the, the results of these uh, preprints that uh, appeared during the last years. You know that archive is, is, the, is, the, is the father or is the, uh, the main uh, and the first uh, preprint servers, but then they have appeared different subject uh, preprint servers, as you can see here, and they are the, uh, these, um, these figures show how they have grown in different, in different disciplines from uh, engineering, uh, social sciences, psychology, and any, uh, any other. So you can, you can read here in this report all this information. And that's all. No. This is the, the, the queen <laughs> in, in Alessandra. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you so much. And we have time for questions. Questions. I'll try to see hands. It's, the light is right in our eyes down here. And I think we have a microphone, too. You've got it down here. We'll run and bring a mic to you. All those people who've never heard of Plan U. <laughs> <laughs> I really want a coffee. <laughs> That's right. Yes, right here in the middle. Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning. My, my name is Ernest Abadal from the University of Barcelona. I am a colleague of Reme, and thank you very much for your, your presentation. I, I, I only want to, to ask you a, a question uh, related to this, the, 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 the oligopoly of the, 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 the publisher system. No? And uh, what kind of measures do you think that can be established to prevent, to avoid, to control uh, this situation? We, we know that the situation in the current life with, fa with Facebook, Google, I I in other sphere uh, has uh, uh, conducted to a quasi-monopoly in, in the, the scholarship. What measure, which kind of measures can be adopted to uh, avoid this, uh, bad, uh, the, the, this bad model? What do you think about that? Okay, there are different approaches. One of these is, uh, the, well, there are already consortiums that they are negotiating with, uh, with these publishers to get uh, less prices. Um, well, this is more than nothing, but it's not the solution. So there are also another approach could be, so at national level, negotiate with these ones, so, uh, and to get reasonable prices. At European, pr uh, uh, um, level, for instance, uh, the ex um, Vice President Moedas said that he uh, uh, finished um, his mandate with, um, without the results uh, he thought he, he was going to have with the open, in, in the open science environment, and said that probably uh, we should negotiate at a uh, European level. So there are probably these three approaches. From my point of view, no one of them is, is the, the best one. So probably the, the one of the one of the approaches could be the, 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 the one in this block. So is we should consider or we have to be aware of this of the cause and try to invest in instead of investing in this in these companies, to invest in our own infrastructures and use for instance PKP is a good example of these infrastructures, and the cost of uh, maintaining PKP is not so high. So there is no one, one I mean, there is no the one solution, there are not only one uh, answer, but my point of view is we should consider the cost of all these services and, and products, and consider to reinvest part of, at least part of this money in our infrastructure and in our uh, scientists and, and, and researchers. There, there is no one. One size doesn't fit all. <laughs> so. Great. Another question? Yes, down here. Oh. 
Well, first of all, I think I'm one of the two people that knew about Plan U, but because I heard it from you in a different <laughs> talk. <laughs> and so thanks for that. And it's great that you mentioned America, and it's great all the echo that America is having uh, in Europe. Um, but I was wondering if you could elaborate more um, about similar initiatives in Europe um, that uh, are uh, taking this role of coordinating uh, non-profit uh, scholarly publishing infrastructure? Well, exactly the same. No, we have Open Air, for instance. Open Air is a, is a, serv is a European service for users, for data providers, and for service providers. And they have also these uh, this statistics. That's why I even understand why the European Commission should uh, a higher Elsevier, if we have also open air with all these statistics. There are also harvesters in, in, in Europe, BASE or CORE from, from the United Kingdom. So there is not, or at least from my point of view, from my knowledge, there is not a kind of platform because these platforms uh, especially are born because they need to, to, to group their, I mean, their, their, their forces in, in some way. That's why an America is not only the, a portal of uh, journals that they are open, they are, I mean, uh, reusable and so on. They are, as, as I said, they provide more services about uh, rights, licenses, um, policies, and uh, uh, open science in, in, in general. So I don't think there is a kind of thinking. In, in, of course, the, the European Commission has this, uh, this uh, kind of service. And the, in the next step is the, the European Open Science Cloud, but it's, this is for data, and there are also services. But as, as, as that, uh, I'm not aware of that. But so but anyway, there are a lot of projects and initiatives around open science that probably <laughs> sometimes, from a point of view, also there are some of them, they are redundant. But so they probably should put together all the, <laughs> the all the efforts. <laughs> and another question. One right over here. Hi, <clears throat> uh, my name is Laura. I had not heard about the Plan U. So um, my question is that um, if preprints became the mainstream. Um, what are the concerns about uh, the lacking peer review? What are your thoughts about that? So you can peer review the preprints. In fact, Archive, for instance, they offer the open peer review of the, the, the files uploaded. It's, I mean, it's not mandatory, but you can have a peer re open peer review in the whole universe. Of course, if you are in the discipline, but you can uh, you can uh, you can make a system for peer review the the preprints. There, I can't remember the name, but there is a, a, a an initiative that is the peer uh, the preprints are pre peer pre, oh, pre, pre review um, before submissions, and then when the, the 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 paper is submitted to a particular uh, journal, they can provide also the this pre. Uh, preview to the to the publisher, so that's that could be increase the the the, the other peer reviews because this could be a universal peer review, and the other in the I mean in, if you submit the paper in, in to uh, to a journal, so probably you have two three peer reviews, and that is open to the the whole community. So the lack of quality is one of the the one of the. Uh, Arguments that this kind of publishes no because peer review is, is expensive. Of course, peer review is expensive, but they think they are paying the peer review. So when they argue that the the, the cost of publishing is, is is high because also the peer review that's false. That is not true because the peer review is made by by us. So I'm also a scientist and I peer review papers for I mean just today for me, tomorrow for 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 myself or for for others. So, and that's uh, the reason. So if, um, I, I think I remember I read something about uh, how much time or how much time you consume uh, peer review the paper. It's about five hours at least. So who is paying these five hours? Yeah. The publishers are not paying there. So if you have the preprints and, and you create this uh, peer review system on top or in, in, in the system could be perfectly so peer review as, 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 as in any other um, platform, a publisher platform. Okay. Thanks. 
other questions? Up at the top, it's okay. You can ask questions. He doesn't mind going up there with the microphone. Up, oh, there's one at the top. Hi. Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious about why Plan S or Plan U focus so much on preprints instead of taking over the whole system. I mean, why are you stopping at preprints and not just full stack of publishing? Well, this is a, um, a kind of uh, um, conception of the system. It's not just preprints. In fact, I should put uh, um, an scheme which is uh, the path fair model. Which is the buffer model? If you, I mean, if you search on the on the on the internet, there is a, is a model by well some people from Core, and it's uh, you have the repo, the preprints repositories here on the on the base, and then you create the, the publishing layer, then the dissemination layer, and any other services on top of this. So this is like a principle, the plan you, but the how you develop the. The, the other parts of the workflow depends on if we are going to do that or not. But PubFair, remember PubFair, is a, is a, uh, is a model of a framework to construct this, all these layers uh, from the preprint service. John, John right. you want to oh, There's a question down here. Thanks so, excuse me, thanks so much for engaging uh, and a great way to open, engaging uh, opening address. Um, one of the things you made very clear is just how much content is owned by the uh, major publishers, by the top five publishers. Uh, and I think any scheme and any way of thinking about that has to address um, that body of content that is owned. And I just wondered if you had any ideas or have seen initiatives that address that very large proportion of content. So there, well, in fact, my national project is, is working on that, and at national uh, level, we are working on on how much uh, content in in these publishers and how how the content is uh, is in uh, if it's in in the green or no, or it's in the gold or on both, and uh, and so on. There, at least in Spain, there are some some projects related to. And in Europe, of course, yeah. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Wave your hand more wildly in case I can't see it. So we can go to the coffee break. I think I don't so. Know what time. <laughs> All right, if there's no further questions, I want to just thank Reme again for your okay. opening address. <laughs> thank you.